participation in 34 years of the firefighter and he got the foot injury five years ago during the skiing. So still the pain vase was around seven and he got a lot of this cortisone injection more than 10 times, around 15 times of injection, but still pain is ongoing, so he came to me. So his range of motion was good. But on his physical examinations, there's a lot of the physical findings are positive, but no biceps related physical findings, including biceps tenderness negative, speed test negative, and ergasm was negative. Plain x-ray is normal. CT arthrogram, you can see that there's a type 2 slab lesions, and also you can see the chronic the cyst related bony change like that way on the posterior superior glenoid labrum. MRI scan, you can see the definitely type 2 slab lesion with the uh, spinoglenoid ganglion cyst. The maximum diameter was 2.4 centimeters. So according to my clinical study, that's more than 2.2 centimeter with the size of the ganglion cyst. Uh, that is related to EMG positive, but in this patient's EMG was negative. But probably we can see that patient has a slab lesions on CT arthrogram and also MRI, and also slab fiscals are positive, no biceps related tenderness and uh, physical findings. So I decided to go to the ganglion cyst decompression through the slab lesion, repair the slab uh, lesion. If there's something wrong on the biceps tendon, I will probably uh, cut the biceps tendon and uh, probably you know, this is, it depends on the pathology of the biceps tendon. So for this, the slab, uh, slab repair, my routine posterior anterior portal is the same, but my posterior, my, the, uh, the walking portal for slab lesion through the trans rotate cuff portal. So at the beginning, I will inject the normal cell line through, through the glenohumeral joint to prevent the cartilage injury. So this is a right shoulder from the posterior view with the 30 degrees of scope. So I will make the anterior inferior accessory pulver through the outside in technique. For the bunker repair, I will make the main walking portal here, but for the slab lesions, I will do the trans rotate cuff portal through here. So at this moment, the anterior inferior is going to be accessory walking portal. So six point five millimeters of the anterior cannula was inserted. Proof. So you can see here the meniscus looking, but type two slab lesion is here. Sergeant. Arthroscopic diagnostic, the clue for the slab is the separation, more than five millimeters. Cartilage crack like this. Uh, some kind of inflammatory granulation tissues around here. That's the clue for the true slab lesion. And also, actually, this is slab seven. It's slab lesion is related, the connected to the MGH. Yeah? That's probably the slab type seven. So, so for the su supra, it's partial articular side partial tear, but that's not that significant. And also we have to check the biceps tendon proof. So we can prove the biceps tendon and look at the biceps tendon through the biceps groove. 
So no synovitis and also no partial tears around there. And the biceps lean looks intact, so biceps is okay. So after decompression, probably I will do the biceps. Instead of the biceps tenodesis, I will repair the slab. And here, cool. we can see here the posterior extended slab proof. A little bit until 10 o'clock. So probably I will decompress the slab through, decompress the cyst through the slab lesion. I will try to decompress this uh, cyst through the anterior cannula using the sharp elevators. Here you can see the ganglion cyst is coming out. Sometimes it is easy, but sometimes it takes a long time. But you have to look at the cyst carefully before the MRI that there is multilobulated cyst or just only one big uh, cyst. So I can, usually I can decompress the cyst through the anterior cannula. So but you have to be careful about suprascapular nerve injury because the suprascapular nerve is located around 2.5 centimeters medial to the glenoid, superior glenoid tubercle. Usually slab lesion is the checking valve and the, the mechanism of the ganglion cyst is due to the one-way checking valve through the slab lesion. After the sharp elevator, I like to use the blunt elevators to decompress the cyst. Here you can see here the remaining, remaining cyst is coming out. On the CT scan, you can see the bony change around the cyst. So that means it's really long-standing cyst that caused the changes of the remodeling of the glenoid, superior glenoid tubercle. We don't need to completely remove remover of the cyst wall, but just break the cyst and then Usually that's enough. I have, no, I have no cases of recurrence after the compression, shaver. Sometimes you can use shaver through the, under the slab. On, but you have to be careful, stop. Not to, stop. Elevator, abort. Do not shave uh, through the, with blind manner, okay? So some more the cystic fluid is coming out by the probing or decompressing by the, with the elevators. I think the interruption of the negative checking valve system is achieved. I can palpate the suprascapular notch area with this proof, so I can feel nothing is interrupting over there. So, okay. Cut. 
stop. Elevator, down or board. Slave repair does not take long time, so you it better to have enough time for the decompression if you need, if you want. I can feel the I can feel here the bony touching. Something is coming out like that way. Okay. Suction on. So you can open the outflow to flow out the cyst fluid through the anterior cannula. But as I said before, the full removal of cyst wall is not important. Just disruption of the checking valve system that is important for the cyst management. Some surgeons go cyst graph. I mean, that's uh, they go through the cyst and look at the cyst and remove the old cyst wall. But I don't think it is necessary. Sometimes. Suprascapula can be damaged through that procedure. So, indirect compression is enough for this kind of lesion with a type 2 slab lesion. So I will repair this left from now on. Shaver. I usually remove the cartilage on to enhance the labrum to bone healing. So remove the superior, superior glenoid tubercle, the cartilage here to expose the subchondral Bleeding bony surface. Stop. Pause you say. I like to expose the subchondral bone. Stop. To enhance the labor to bone healing. On. Stop. I like to fix the uh, superior labrum mainly on posterior side. On. Stop shaver. There still there is ongoing debate which position of this slab repair is on good for the patient outcome. Stop. Schneider and Dr. Sugaya wants to fix around here and Dr. Burkett, he said that posterior slab is money stitch that is biomechanically the posterior slab is much important. I support Dr. Burkett's the theory that cut so I like to fix the posterior slab and I don't want to go to further one o'clock or two o'clock position. Probably fixation to the anterior side that caused the limitation of external rotation. So I like to stay back. What well, 10, 11, 12 o'clock? Stop. 
that is the proof, the position of the slab repair. I will further, I will further the, the decortication through the anterior, no, transrotate cuff portal. According to my paper in 2009, AJSM, that transrotate cuff portal is really useful because that this kind of transrotate cuff portal really easy to assess the superior labrum. If we want to make a, a anterior superior portal like this way, it's a little bit curved. It's not that direct. Sometimes this posterior fixation is not easy. So I like to use to use the transrotate cuff, but not through this tendon, but through this muscle tendon junction area. So this is good for the uh, transrotate cuff portal for the slab repair. Just lateral to the acromion. You can separate the muscle tendon junction area through this straight hemostat. Not through the tendon, but through the uh, muscle tendon junction area. According to my paper, that's no remaining partial tear. Be careful in patients of the more than 50 years old, but as you know, that's no really, okay? And you can go through that area. Nowadays, probably not many surgeons do the repair, slab repair for more than 50 years old. So, go through this portal that is really useful. So, your assistant should hold this cannula well. So, it's really direct to the superior labrum, okay? Ball. You can further the decorticate the superior tubercle, glenoid tubercle. Here, on. Stop. And for the fixation of the superior labrum, I prefer to use not least suture anchor on not only slab but also the bunker repair and capsule applications. I like to use the not least suture anchor. You can put the uh, suture knot outside of the glenohumeral joint, like over there for the slab, uh, the bunker repair. But according to my paper, that after several hundreds of the cycling motions, the suture knot is coming to the glenohumeral joints and sometimes it causes the, the abrasion arthritis, arthropathy. So. And also for the slab, definitely, in the position of abduction and external rotation, not cause impingement. So I like to use the uh, knotly suture anchor. So I will show you in this surgery uh, with the Natalie suture anchor with Arthrex, uh, 2.9 millimeters of the push lock. Uh, as I said before, proof, my fixation of superior labrum is around here and here. So 12 o'clock or 11 to 10 o'clock position. So for the easiness, I think I, I usually do posterior fixation first and then anterior fixation. I don't go to the one o'clock or two o'clock position. So I would like to check, check the decortication over there. On some more decortication. Stop probe.
I think subcontrol exposure is enough. Okay. I will start the posterior part first. Okay. At the beginning, wing. I like to make a posterior portal. I mean posterior slab repair first around here. So make a mark here, not to lose. Okay. So with a suture hook from the trans-rotate cuff cannula, suture the superior labrum as deep as much possible here, and then retrieve one suture through the anterior cannula. Then we lay one fiber wire. King. And the other limb of the fiber wire is. through the trans-rotate cuff portal, like that way. So this is the swivel lock 2.9 millimeters. We can transfer the two sutures through the anchor. And then we can, the anchor can be go through the cannula here. So you can give some tension by your finger. So you can tap in until here. You can give more tension if you want in this position. Then remove the red cap in the ang in the road and more tapping through here until the laser marker. So that's it. So it's really easy, simple. So you can screw out. And cut the tendon, cut the sutures. Easy, simple, right? So second suture anchor is the for the anterior side. Around here. On. Stop. Make a mark. On. On. Okay. One more, the PDS through the anterior slab. Try not to capture the capsule, but only through the labrum. Then retrieve one limb through the anterior cannula. Then transfer the fiber wire. So I published last uh, in this year about the nut ache. So nut it not induce the pain, not induce you know synovitis. So especially for slab lesion, you'd better not to make a nut in the joint because the, in the position of abduction and external rotation, nut can be in, impinged between superior labrum and rotator cuff. So another simple repetition here. Pull. Right. 
Vale. You can further go down. And you can give a little bit more tension on it. Alright, so remove the red cap and then further tap in until the laser marker and screw back and take out the anchor rod and cutting the suture so that's all, simple and take out the trans-rotate cup portal proof that's it so easy simple no take no need for the anchor i mean the suture tie but after you always have to uh, check the superior capture is incorporated like that way so every time i fix the superior labrum i always release the superior capsule cut from the superior labrum so you better have to release every time this superior capsular release to prevent post-operative stiffness. As you know, the post-operative stiffness is a major complication of the slab repair. So remove, uh, release the capsule here. Stop. Cut. Not to be stiff after such slab repair. Stop. Okay. Stop. Okay, On. Probo. Shave the book. On. And this patient is the fire firefighter, so. His work level is a little bit high, so slab repair has a rationale for this patient. Cool. Stop. Cool. So a little bit partial tear in the supra. I like to just debride to for the treat the mechanical symptoms of the supra. Stop. Proof. Here I can check the superior labrum is well fixed to the superior glenoid tubercle. So I like it. So, so usually the trans rotate cuff portal here, it is well healed. According to my paper, that no partial tear has happened and no leakage after one year of CT arthrogram. So don't worry about the tendon injury through the trans cuff portal, especially for the young, young patients. Okay, this is the end of this, the surgery of the slap lesion with spinoglenoid ganglion cyst. Thank you.